Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome back to a bonus subscriber interview. This is a interview that this subscriber really felt like he needed to get out to make himself whole. Before we get into it, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, and my merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. The links to Patreon and PayPal are in the description below. My merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters. Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nett Only. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, the links to which are also in the description as well. Finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost you a cent. Click that like button and please leave a comment. All of these things definitely help and they definitely matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's get on with tonight's bonus subscriber interview, shall we? All right, everybody, today I have a subscriber with us. He goes by the name of D. He is, um, I'm honored that he was able to come on the show, take some time out of his day. D, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, thank you for coming on, and I appreciate the 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 willingness and uh, cur courage to come on the show and share uh, your encounters with us. It's it's an honor. My pleasure. My pleasure. I got to get this out. So right now, uh, the only time I may interrupt is if I've got a legitimate question about size or something, but. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, I am uh, 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 50, 53. I uh, live in Tampa, Florida right now. I used to, I grew up in uh, Massachusetts and would vacation in summers in Maine uh, from when I was a child up to uh, my uh, mid to late 20s. Uh, I parents uh, owned some cottages up there they would rent and uh, had a permanent place up there and we would go up uh, throughout the summers and on the weekends uh, this uh, event happened in a place just uh, uh, called Ocean Park Maine it's a play a little cottage town on the beach just south of Old Orchard Beach um, I had previously been on other uh, Bigfoot and Dogman shows with uh, Vic Cundiff. Uh, I was on his Bigfoot Experience 199 and Dogman Encounters 296. And those experiences all happened in this little town uh, from the time I was 11 until my mid 20s. Uh, I uh, had explained most of them to, to Vic, but uh, they happened so infrequently that I, I would, had kind of shut them out of memory. And uh, as my my uh, kids got older, I, uh, and you know, started having kids of their own and were, go out camping and whatnot. I, I felt the need that I had to at least uh, warn them. And uh, so I, I've, I've told them about it. They don't don't quite know how to grasp it because I'm not, you know, uh, I was just a I'm just a regular dad. Uh, and uh, never was into squatching and, and bigfooting and you know all that stuff. Uh, so they at least know that I believe these things are out there, and I just want them to be careful, which is uh, have to battle. But then I realized that there's so many other people out there who are in harm's way and don't even know it. Hmm. Um, so uh, in the Dogman encounter I had in '94, uh, I was being stalked by a juvenile dogman uh, and uh, had run into it with a larger dogman. I don't know if it was a female or a male, but it was nine to feet, ten feet tall, wow. and um, it had uh, the um, the juvenile that I saw. Uh, was trying, I was walking the tracks from Old Orchard into this town and 
the last house before I hit uh, my town uh, where there's nothing but brush um, in the backyard. There was a being five to six feet in the air, full moon. I could see a silhouette, arms, legs, and head making itself through the brush to meet me as I was going to head over the tracks. And uh, my first thought was uh, that this is some crazy person because all they had to do was go down the driveway to go down the street. Um, and here it is trying to meet me at an angle through some of the thickest brush and it's tearing it up pretty well to meet me there if I kept going. So I ended up going around <laughs> walking the streets and coming down almost to my house. And, and, uh, at the end of the street, there's all a bunch of brush. There's a little park there called Guild Park, it's a little triangle of woods. And my friend's house is right behind it. I heard a growl again. This thing, the large one, the nine, 10 footer stuck its head out nine, 10 feet in the air. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a dog, a dog up in a tree. Started walking toward it. Like, Hey buddy, you okay? I'm trying to figure out how this dog got up in the tree. <laughs> Thinking out. And I, and it cocked its head and was like, what's this, you know, like dogs do like what? And, and, uh, started looking around, cocked its head back, looking around, uh, behind me and stuff. I don't know if, the cottage is everybody in this town, they go to bed, they're all families that rent. And, and so they go to bed at like nine o'clock when it gets dark and there were some lights on. I don't know if people were looking out the window when they heard me, because if you walk down these streets, my father would always get on my case with my friends when we have a group of teenagers or 20 year olds who run, out, uh, run down to the beach and then we're real loud walking down the streets. People would complain because we'd wake up their children. So me having this interaction with this being i don't know if someone was looking out the window and it saw them or what but it ended up <clears throat> turning to its uh its left my right and chat and snarling it was the only aggressive thing that happened snarling at something back in the woods i'm assuming it was this juvenile because it was a smaller being and then it went back and then i i went up around the woods and then came went home well Shortly, I had forgotten about this, but shortly thereafter, um, I went to go visit my, my cousin's place. He has a place on the beach up in Camp Ellis and this little town, which is just south of us on in Ocean Park. And I remember walking down Temple where I lived and, and taking, uh, where was I, uh, going down, the uh, uh, taking a right at Royal Ave and then taking a left on Randall <laughs> and right on Royal Ave, there's this little uh, set of uh, pine trees and bushes. Um, sometimes the cottages at the end of the street would have a bunch of pine trees, maybe 20 to 40 feet of pine tree and bushes in between the house and the street. And I got a, something growled at me. Uh, um, and I didn't, wasn't even thinking, you know, this thing happened so infrequently. I wasn't thinking that dog man thing again. I, I should have been, uh, but so I walked up to the, to the tree line and I'm looking in the tree line and I'm seeing a shadow that's almost as tall as me, maybe a little taller and thin and it growled. And I was just, I booked it. I just grabbed, I just turned, kept walking. I'm going to my cousin's room. I'm up the street. And like I said, this is a cottage town and there's a, a lot of people there. Um, and people are in bed by now. Cause I would go, I would go up, uh, when the light, when it got dark, you know, nine, 10 o'clock, hang out, have a couple beers with my cousin and friends, and then come home, walking home one, two o'clock in the morning. So I, I leave there. I go down route nine to Randall again. I'm coming back the same way I, I came and, and stupid me. Um, I've had a few, few beers, not too many, but. I'm not even thinking, uh, I'm approaching the woods where this thing growled at me again. This is like these whole Bigfoot and dogman things happen so infrequently. Like I didn't expect it to happen again. It's like, I'll see him and then I won't see him for years, you know? Yeah. And stupid me, I'm walking down the street and, uh, I start approaching Royal and I hear a growl again and I'm looking at the ground and as I'm walking, and I looked to my right and this dog had come out from the wood line on, and just sat there with the, the houses on the right hand side. I'm walking on the left by the sidewalk, well, we're in the street. And uh, it's sitting there and it's really thin. It's 
probably like five to six feet tall sitting. And um, I was looking up online these dog wolf hybrids with really long hair. And it was like that. Uh, the, the dog man I saw prior to that, the nine, 10 footer, uh, was like uh, a wolf dog hybrid, but uh, really big. The head was huge. Mm -hmm. Had the hump on the back. I mm -hmm. could see the top of the shoulders. Did you see muscular. an eye shine on that one on the nine to ten footer when you saw it? Yeah. When when I when I saw that one, it was so big. It was like muscular. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, maybe the the shoulders shoulder to shoulder maybe four feet. Wow. I mean this thing this thing was giant. Like it was buff. This dog, I don't know if it was like a year old or two year. I don't know. I. But it look, at first, I thought it was just a really big, skinny dog, mm -hmm. and it was sitting on its hind quarters. Uh, but its hand, its paws were right close to its its thighs. But its its paws were weird, uh, and uh, it's just sitting there uh, like dogs do, and lo and looking at me, and uh, I'm like, oh, great. And I'm like, so this is what was staring at. It was, was in the, the woods. And I'm not even putting together, like, the, the huge dog man with this might be the juvenile. This is what juveniles look like, if you know what I mean. And so I uh, I look at it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to make friends with this thing. It's not on a leash. You know, I don't see any collar or anything like that. And, you know, and I used to do that with dogs in the area because we had a lot of renters who'd bring their dogs up and, you know, you put your hand out to them and, you know, hey, you know, if it was a good dog. Most of them are domesticated, so they're good. And you could, they'd wag their tail and you pet them. So I started approaching this dog and I'm realizing it's really thin, but really big. And, hey, buddy, how you doing? It growls at me again. And then I start walking forward and it goes on all fours. And it hop, I hop on the sidewalk and it hops on the sidewalk to face me. And it's, it's got its head reared down with its back up and it's, hand, it's front paws are really weird. Like they talk about these raccoon hands. It was, it's weird like that. And I stick my hand out thinking it's a dog. Hey, you know, everything's good, you know, kind of thing. Hey buddy. Right. And it turns its head to its side, like, and then it turns it back and it starts keep coming. And I'm like, oh, uh, then I'm finally realizing this thing is not what I think it is. And luckily, there was a cottage right to my left. I had a friend, uh, Paul, uh, his aunt owned it, I believe. And he was he's a, a friend from growing up there. And he would vacation there at least once or twice a year. But she would rent it out. And uh I had just enough, I mean, this thing's feet away from me and I had just enough time to get on his porch and open up the door. Thank God it was open. I shut the door and I lie down on the front porch. It's a, it's a front porch and the front door is right there next to it. And I'm fully trying to grasp. I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is, that must've been the little one. And it's think I'm being, it thinks I'm being aggressive with it. And, and, I fully expected the thing to open up the door and just have at me. Um, I didn't want to pound at the door yet. Um, cause I didn't know if Paul was there. Uh, if, you know, you only frequented there like one week out of the summer, two weeks out of the summer. And so I'm lying down trying to keep as quiet as possible. My heart's racing like crazy. I'm praying. And I was so, uh, so scared. I passed out. I literally passed out and uh thankfully it it didn't it, it ran off uh must have run off uh and at 6 a.m whoever was renting uh, came down and the guy uh, the, the wife had got her husband out there and he grabbed me and he's like hey what are you doing here and i'm like i'm sorry this is my friend paul's place uh, you're renting here um you know i apologize so it's some dog chasing me and you know, I was going to tell him what I was, you know, some werewolf chasing me or anything like that. Right. And, uh, the, and, uh, he's like, no, get out of here. And I'm like, Oh, thank God. You didn't call the cops. You know, I would have gotten in big trouble and everything, but I ended up, I live right down the street. So I was able to run home anyway. So, uh, yeah. So that was, you know, 
that was that experience. And, you know, when we would walk at night, generally it was a group of us. We'd have friends and we'd never try to walk alone because the place we always, you know, it was creepy. Uh, people didn't want to walk by Guild Park alone. Uh, uh, you could hear stuff in the woods walking around in, in Guild Park. And that's, you know, where, I, you know, I, I ran into Bigfoot with my friends and uh, at least more than one occasion there. And uh, so, you know, I've been praying to God to try to remember these things. I totally put this, this event out of my mind. I, uh, it's hard to explain, but uh, when you have these experiences and you try to tell people about them, especially your family and others, and they just tell you, look, you can't tell anybody you've seen these things. They'll think you're crazy. I'm not sure if I believe you, even though you're their family members who know you wouldn't lie to them about this kind of thing. And so you just, for me, I learned to just, okay, I'm not even, I'm not going to go in the woods at night. I'm not going to walk alone in the woods at night, but I'm going to get this out of my mind. And it's my coping mechanism, I guess. So, so I was just trying to remember that. And then uh, there was one other Bigfoot experience <coughs> where uh, we went down uh, West Grand uh, Route 9 to Old Orchard, and we actually got right to Old Orchard mm -hmm. uh, with a bunch of my friends. Uh, I think there's a mini golf on the left-hand side there now. And my, there's a restaurant that used to be there uh, my friend used to work in. And my friend looks over, and I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, there's a Bigfoot in their dumpster <laughs> and this this is there's literally this is old orchard beach uh nothing but people walking up and down the side you wouldn't believe it and i was like what and this is not a bigfoot guy none of us were bigfoot guys we were just kind of like what and i looked over and his friend my his brother and his friends were like ah you're crazy and i'm like what dude and <clears throat> i started running after it and it booked behind it right behind there's the railroad tracks and it went right on the railroad tracks. I, I ran up to the railroad tracks and it was like 50 yards ahead of me, 30, 50 yards ahead of me. And it was all black and it wasn't as big as the alphas that I saw that were like 10 to 12 feet. This thing was like my height and I'm running, it's running and it turns around and it, it does a scream at me. And I just wanted to see it. I wasn't trying to run it down or anything. And, and uh, I was like, I heard that scream and I was like, well, I'm out. And I turned around and, and ran back to my friends and I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, so-and-so was right. That, that there's some, it's something, it's black, it's hairy and it's pissed. And, uh, and they're like, ah, oh, you guys are crazy kind of thing. But that was the other event that I had forgotten. So, yeah, they're up there. If you've been in that area, you probably think I'm a liar. But, um, you know, I had to get this out only because uh, there are a lot of people. They, it's a quiet little town. You think you're safe, you know, and, uh, you know, you people walk around late at night when the lights are on and, and stuff like that, uh, you know. But these things are out there. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, I just had to, to get that, get that out. Um, because, uh, you hear these stories that Jeff's talking about, uh, in the newspaper with these events, uh, where, uh, quote unquote, pack of dogs or have mauled somebody. And, uh, not that I think all these dog men are out to maul humans, but I think they'll take the opportunity if they can find it. And, even if you think this is a form of entertainment or you find this entertaining and you haven't experienced these things, I just want to warn you that, you know, we're not the apex predator uh, on this planet. There are things bigger and better and uh, you need to be very careful. Well, I hope you don't run into a situation like this, but I'm hoping that people will take enough care <laughs> excuse me, to avoid getting themselves in a situation that they can't get out of. <laughs> excuse me. And, uh, yeah, when I ran into this juvenile, the only thing I can fathom is that these beings are all about um, being an alpha predator. And if they feel challenged in any way, they have to address it. You hear stories where uh, people take a pot shot at them and then they drive home and then the things in their backyard tearing their dogs to pieces. 
because it feels like you went to its home and disrupted its life and it's going to come find you. Well, <laughs> I think they also have the attitude that the alpha reigns and you need to be tough, the survival of the fittest kind of thing. And if they feel challenged at all, um, they're more than happy to, uh, to, to pick a fight. I think that's kind of what this juvenile did. I think it, it was confused because I was trying to be friendly and sticking my hand out, telling me thinking it's a really tall, thin dog, and then realizing it's got hands, like raccoon hands. And like, oh, crap, this was the, the one that was tracking me the other day and uh, had led the, the 9, 10 footer to me. And uh, maybe he wasn't satisfied with... Uh, the way the 910 footer help, you know, dealt with it by just leaving me alone and thought, well, you, you know, I'm going to address this guy. And if he uh, addresses me back, I'm it's the game's on. Uh, that's the way I felt. I mean, it sounds weird, but I, I honestly think this is the way these things operate. I think they're uh, very, very animalistic, but they're very, very smart. They're not quite human, not quite dog, but they're very territorial and, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think it took it as me retreating and hiding as sufficient, like, okay, you know, I'm still the badass. Uh, I'm going to leave him alone kind of thing. Right. But, but that was it. So. Well, I, I appreciate you taking, you know, the time, like I said. Um, just one couple quick questions on when it was, when you were face to face with it, um, mm -hmm. and you had your hand down, like, you know, to coax it over to, you know, yeah. say, Hey, I'm friends with you. Um, yeah. it was dark out, obviously. Now yeah. people, people say they see a amber color or a red color was, were you able to see an eye or was it just, it black, wasn't reflecting, <clears throat> it wasn't reflecting light. Okay. I didn't have a flashlight on it or anything like that. Right. Um, um, just like the big one, I don't remember the eye, shine, eye color or eye shine. I think it looked just like a regular eye. So a lot of people say they see these amber eyes. Yeah. That's why I thought the big one was just like a regular dog. I could have, you know, I'm guessing it was just normal color eyes. Um, and this one was no different. Um, it had, it was black with some brown and longer, longer hair. Uh, I don't know if this particular breed grows in when they, that it, it just kind of sorts it, you know, it, it, it doesn't look so shaggy or maybe there's some that have long hair. Uh, I don't know. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, that's why I thought it was just a regular dog. Uh, at, you know, um, it, like I said, it was approaching me slowly, uh, ears back, growling fangs, for, you know, mouth up bangs uh with and its its head was low to the ground kind of like uh, if you ever see a lioness or lions when they're they're hunting yeah and they're staying real low and i was like oh, i am in some serious trouble right now yeah. um and uh uh yeah and so it's weird because you know when you don't experience these things or you experience limited things 99 percent of your mind's on normal not this uh, and then when you realize you're in that situation, it's just, you know, flight or flight kicks in, of course. Uh, but it's just, it's really hard thing. You, you end up getting like a PTSD and shock. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's why I think I passed out because my heart was going a mile a minute. I thought, okay, this thing's going to open the door. Yeah. Lying on the ground. It's going to gut me. I'm going to be pounding on the door. They're going to find me ripped to shreds. Yeah. That's a good but, explanation because, you know, you've heard people, <sighs> through other encounters that say, Hey, you know, I, I saw this thing out my kitchen window or my bedroom window and I, it scared me and I ended up going back to sleep. Well, you know, it's, it's the shock, you know, people are like, well, how did they fall back to sleep or this and that? Well, your adrenaline is up so high and then it goes and you're left with nothing. It's almost like, you know, a, a crash, you know? Yeah, and yeah. so, I mean, you're, uh, you're absolutely lucky that the, the door was unlocked on that house, on the cottage, you know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, like I said, uh, yeah, thank God, you know, I was praying big time. Uh, I can't, you know, and that's why another reason I'm doing this, I'm like, 
if that door was locked, there's a good chance I'd be the pack of dogs guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I've run into up there where people had their hunting dogs that got loose and <clears throat> they easily tear a person up, you know, uh, you, you know, uh, so, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I count my blessings, like, you know, thank God and, uh, literally prayed about it. And it was, you know, from listening to your show and other shows, I've been trying to piece together the whole situation that's the way I kind of saw it. I just kind of saw it as uh, these things are super uber ter- territorial and it felt challenged. <clears throat> and I, you know, because it didn't get me the first time, maybe it knew I would walk around uh, at night uh, visiting friends mm-hmm. and had no problem being like two o'clock in the morning, just walk around and be the only person in town up walking around, getting home or whatever. And, uh, I don't know if it was following me or, or what, but um, maybe it has some kind of thing where it was like, if I growl at this guy and he, he confronts me, I, it game's on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that's the way it felt. It felt like as soon as it sat down, it was like chill. And then I addressed it <clears throat> and then it growled and, you know, <laughs> I think it took it as kind of me being aggressive again. And, and, uh, you know, can only imagine that these things is a survival of the fittest for them. They got to be ready to go all the time and they have their own way of, of dealing things. Yeah. Pack mentality and. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I really appreciate you coming on, sharing your encounter with us. Um, it, it, you know, me and you, we, we had a little bit of a talk before the interview and it was great talking with you getting to, to know you um i think that it's important that more people like you come out and share you know because you'd bottled this up for so long ptsd shame fear whatever and i think that it it it, it's beneficial for other people to hear someone who has had an encounter that's afraid to share it to and that way, the puzzle pieces, more puzzle pieces are put into play. Maybe then we'll have that puzzle put together. So, Yeah, at the very least, if there's anyone who's listening who will, in a rural town or in a suburb even, or, you know, and they get that weird feeling like some, something's eyeballing me and I just can't place it, <clears throat> that they, you know, don't shake it off and, and uh, be very, uh, very careful because uh, these things, they're out there and they have no problem uh, uh, going through yards and, and uh, going through trash and dumpsters and right alongside of us. I think, you know, and I think they, you know, maybe even see us as form of entertainment. Maybe they just like eyeballing us and seeing how we act as humans when we're walking around and, <clears throat> And whatnot, but if I can get it out there for anybody that if you're going to go on a hike or a walk or if you live in a rural area, uh, don't even take putting out your trash or, or, or uh, going for a walk lightly. Um, where you know you hear too many of these sad cases where a person's out in the middle of nowhere walking and, and they end up dead. Yeah, and I think uh, these not all of them, but some of them are opportunists and they'll uh, if they can get away with it, um, and uh they'll do it. I think they'll do it. Yeah, and right, right now we're dealing with, I, I 100% believe that, that, that what happened in Texas was an opportune, opportunistic kill, you know? Uh, and it's, it's, it's a shame that, you know, these, that the, they're covering these things up and more people are gonna, are gonna die unfortunately because the the news media or the powers that be are not saying hey guys be careful you know i mean we're not we can accept that there's bear we can accept that there's wolves we can accept there's you know eventually we we are going to accept that hey there is something else out there you know there's some sort of land shark you know and it's it's got hair and you know so, you know, it's just, I don't know, but yeah, it's, it's 
real nice to talk to you and i appreciate you coming on i really do i do i appreciate talking to you too thanks thanks a lot jeff all right is there anything that you'd like to say to anybody after we uh or to everybody kind of to end the upload here? <clears throat> yeah yeah just uh you know uh if you're in that area uh don't if you're a researcher don't please just don't i'm telling you these things the ones i saw the 10 the alpha bigfoot and this alpha dogman they're not they're not playing around most definitely most definitely. all right all right all well, right it was thank great you Jeff. talking to you thank you d uh, thank you all right guys steve's super nice guy i had a blast talking to him before and after and during i hope you guys enjoyed it as much as i enjoyed sharing it with you remember what he said at the end you know it's always i guess someone always wants to see one of these creatures until they do you know those of us who have seen them um sometimes wish we hadn't and then those of us who had really just are kind of i guess happy that we saw it because at least this way we know um it's a bag of mixed emotions once you've seen these creatures so all right guys thank you for all your support stay healthy stay safe may the great spirit watch over us all and guide us down that path we call life